Before we get into a discussion of uh, the collections and disbursements uh, mechanisms that firms use, we ought to talk for a moment about, about float. Float is the time period between the mailing of a check and the collection period. It might be surprising to know that uh, a firm's cash on its balance sheet, on its own books, occasionally differs from the cash that the bank believes the firm has. And the reason is because of this uh, float. Um, and it arises because the firm is going to record the cash as uh, being uh, paid at the time that it uh, makes a uh, that it writes a check. Right? So the cash is going to, going to disappear at the time that it writes a check, say. But the bank only knows about this when it actually receives the check from whoever the check is made out to uh, for uh, payment. And that could be several days uh, after the check is actually written in some cases. There are two principal types of float. One is mail float and it occurs because it takes a while for a check to actually be delivered through the mail system. Uh, and then the second is called clearing float and it occurs because uh, it takes a while for the check to make its way through the banking system. Now for many large transactions uh, float effectively has disappeared uh, because uh, uh, wire transfers are made, say, between, between two large corporations. But uh, there are actually instances where float becomes important. Uh, consider a, an insurance company that uh, sends out its bills every six months, say, for car insurance. The people who pay their insurance in many cases will uh, pay with a check. That check will have to travel through the mail and uh, the company is would like to get that cash as soon as it can so that it can use that cash to invest in, in its own activities. Um, and so the firm will engage in activities to try to reduce the amount of time that that float is outstanding. So as, as a general rule, firms want to uh, collect their um, collect their money as fast as they can and pay their cash out as slowly as they can. They'd like to increase the float on their own payments because the money can be sitting in the bank uh, in an account perhaps that earns interest until the check is presented. Uh, so they'd like to slow pay. Firms uh, engage in various practice to try to improve collections and the speed with which they collect their accounts receivable and also to uh, slow down uh, disbursements. In terms of improving collection, there are a couple of things that, that uh, might be done. One is to set up multiple collection centers in different locations. So uh, imagine uh, you're all state insurance and you have uh, activities all over the country. Uh, when customers pay their bills, rather than have all of the bills uh, delivered or have all of the, the payments delivered to New York City, uh, if a customer in Idaho pays his bill with a check, uh, they would undoubtedly like to have that money deposited quickly and so they probably have a collection center in Idaho or in the in the Northwest uh, so that uh, a day can be cut off or two days might be cut off of the time it would take for that check to travel through the mail system and so instead of traveling from uh, Idaho to New York it might only have to travel from Idaho to Seattle say and uh, if it gets there a day earlier uh, the firm can have it deposited in the bank and collect that money a day earlier. When you're talking about millions of dollars, one day starts starts to be meaningful. Um, another alternative is uh, something referred to as a lockbox, and that's the second item that you see on the screen right now. You can adopt a lockbox system uh, for uh, rapid check clearance. Uh, and a lockbox essentially is a post office box. So when uh, a customer, say, of the uh, electric company 
makes his payment, frequently that payment is sent directly to a post office box that the bank actually has access to. The bank will open that post office box, will will open the open the box, collect all the checks, immediately make the deposit, uh, the deposits without the check having to pass through the hands of the uh, electric company. So it's rather than sending the check to the electric company and the electric company then ha delivering it to the bank, the lockbox allows the customer to make a payment that goes just directly to the bank and he may not be aware of that. All he sees is that it's being mailed to a post office box. Uh, again, the purpose is to knock a day off of the uh, time to delivery and also the banks are because they do this for many many customers they're very efficient in the handling of this whereas a company might be less efficient since it's only doing it for itself so it sort of outsources the handling of those checks on the other hand while companies want to improve the collection cycle uh, they might be interested in extending disbursement um, and uh, uh, so they might uh, mail their checks, even though the company is headquartered in New York, they might mail their checks from, um, uh, from Alaska to make payments to people in, in Georgia. Uh, and the check gets in the mail by and it's post office, uh, postmarked by a certain time. Uh, then it, uh, it, it's considered to be on time in many cases. Um, so by just mailing the checks from, by having multiple bank accounts and mailing the checks from, from a farther distance, they can actually keep cash in their bank accounts for a longer period of time. Now, the uh, electronic transfers has sped up the processing of, of uh, checks on, in both directions, and uh, for large companies this is less of an issue, although certainly the, the collection side the use of lock boxes and multiple collection centers is still uh, is still widely used firms need to uh, consider the costs of efficiently managing cash so the lock box system the bank does make a charge for that uh, if the firm if the bank or if the uh, firm is going to have uh, accounts to make disbursements from in multiple places around the country their costs to doing that they're going to be charged fees by these banks and the real question is how much can they earn on the cash that they uh, are able to hold on to uh, for a day or two more how much can they earn on that relative to the cost of setting up a relatively complex uh, payment mechanism So let's consider this uh, example and we can see why a firm uh, might care about this. Uh, let's imagine we've got a firm that has collection centers all across the country and uh, those collection centers uh, at, uh, you know, make deposits with regional banks which are then wire transferred so that they're instantaneously tr uh, moved to the headquarters uh, bank, this the central bank for the headquarters. Let's imagine by collecting all over the country we can on average reduce the time it takes to collect our checks. In other words the check gets to some distant low collection center faster than it would get to the corporate bank. And um, if that's the case let's imagine that we can save a day and a half um, uh, on, on collections. Uh, likewise, let's imagine that we engage in various uh, mechanisms for delaying disbursements as far as long as we can, and by doing so, we're able to uh, increase the disbursement time by a day. Well, altogether, that means we have freed up two and a half days, and if, for example, we have two million dollars that pass through the firm uh, on an average day and we've just you know, slowed down payments and increased collections by, by uh, two and a half days. Well that means that we have five million dollars in funds 
that we're able to do something else with. It has effectively freed up $5 million, million dollars in funds. You know, the simple thing we could do is perhaps just pay a dividend of $5 million. Um, if uh, the real question becomes, well, what's having $5 million around worth to us? If, uh, if we can invest that at 10 percent, then uh, that would be $500,000 in earnings per year. If we uh, can run this cash management system for $100,000, we're increasing our earnings by $400,000, or we've got $5 million in cash that we can pay out um, uh, as a dividend if that's a better use of the money. An important innovation in the last few years, of course, the last decade, has been the increased use of electronic funds transfers. Um, essentially, funds are moved between computer terminals without the use of a check ever. There are automatic, automated clearing houses that that uh, facilitate the transfer of information between these banks. There are billions of transfers that move through these clearing houses uh, every year, and um, and so that obviously significantly reduces float. The, um, on the international scale, the international fund transfers are carried out through uh, an organization, the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, SWIFT. Uh, SWIFT uh, uses a proprietary uh, system, it encrypts each message. Uh, it, it, without getting into too many of the details, uh, it uh, really facilitates the electronic transfers that take place on an international basis. Talking about international cash management, there are uh, factors that differentiate international cash management from domestic. Obviously, one element is that you're likely to be dealing with multiple currencies therefore you have in essence multiple cash management programs going on simultaneously just different forms of cash um, there are also differences in the way countries function in many countries uh, payments are made in cash as opposed to by check frequently um, those are sort of less developed in many cases. Um, in other locations, uh, the uh, use of electronic transfers is even more ubiquitous than it is here in the United States. So there are a number of factors that are, will enter into uh, that international cash management uh, function, um, and it's quite highly specialized and, and beyond, for the most part, uh, the focus of what this book is concerned with. There are people that make their careers uh, dealing with what we're showing here in one slide, this international cash management issue. One of the things that's uh, worth noting is financial managers uh, typically want to store any extra cash that they have in a currency that's strong or getting stronger. And by a strong currency, we just mean one that that is gaining in value relative to uh, to other currencies. There are times when some currencies are are um, uh, losing value rapidly because of government policies and companies obviously don't want to be sitting with uh, large stores of those currencies. Um, let me pull up a picture here. Just as a, an example here of uh, how weak a currency can possibly get, this is a uh, illustration from Zimbabwe in a restroom in Zimbabwe uh, a couple years ago uh, where the important piece here is that people are, incur are discouraged, they're obviously encouraged to use toilet paper, but they are discouraged, well, right there, 
from substituting Zimbabwe dollars for toilet paper. Obviously, if a currency has become so devalued that people are using it as toilet paper, um, it's not a currency that a company is going to want to be holding uh, at any point in time. So a financial manager who was doing business in Zimbabwe, you can be sure, as soon as they got a Zimbabwe dollar, as fast as they could, they got rid of it, turned it into some other currency that was stronger. Another uh, method, method that's used to speed up uh, it really doesn't speed up collections, but it makes use of the cash uh, while it's sitting in the bank to earn better returns is the use of a sweep account. Basically, the sweep account allows the company to maintain zero cash balances and instead to deposit uh, any extra cash that they have into some sort of savings account or interest earning account. It's called a sweep account because the bank literally... You know, figuratively sweeps the cash out of the zero balance account into an interest earning account and at some later point in time when a check is presented uh, and needs to be paid uh, the cash is swept back out of the interest earning account back into the uh, account for actually making the payment. So uh, what we've seen here really is uh, Looking at float, the use of cash, uh, companies try to speed up their collections of receivables. They try to slow down the, their, their payables, payments, um, and they do that because it frees that cash up for other uses that can be invested somewhere else uh, rather than uh, uh, being paid out uh, to outside the company. Um, and even for for a, a cash that's in the bank, cash management involves making sure that that cash is sitting in the optimal currency. Uh, also, making sure that any cash uh, that's in the bank isn't in excess of what's needed. To the extent there are excesses, uh, the firm might uh, negotiate with the bank for some sort of sweep account sweeping function that minimizes the amount of just. Uh, dead cash that's sitting in the bank at any one point in time.